Never let yourself be the victim. If I could go back in time and have a conversation with my eight to 10 year old self, that would be the message I would give. Because when you think about it, you're a kid, things don't go your way, what do you do? You cry, you whine, you throw a fit, you want your parents to feel sorry for you. You feel sorry for yourself. It's how, how you deal with things at that age. And then you grow up, but you don't necessarily shed that habit, that mentality. And it becomes obvious, right? I mean, you, you can talk to someone for 30 seconds and you know right away if they have that victim mentality, the world's falling down, they're tired, they have so much to do, they're so busy, X, Y, and Z. Look, having that mindset does two things for you. One, it makes you come across helpless and weak, and no one wants to come across that way. Two, it does not get you to where you're going. It does not change the situation. Right? Here's the reality. There is always a way to get what you want. There is always a way to position yourself to move away from what you don't want. You can quite literally become what you want to become, but you cannot look at life like it's this problem, like it's against you. The ball is in your court. You know, it wasn't that long ago, two, three years ago, that I was not the happiest guy in the world, right? Did not like what I was doing, did not like how I was spending my time, was not energized, was not passionate about very much. But the time came where I didn't want to live like that. I had a conversation with myself. I stopped being the victim, I stopped complaining, and I asked myself, dude, what do you want? What is your purpose? What is your goal? Who do you want to become? And I literally made the decision and walked away a different person. And the things around me changed, my life changed, because I made a decision to never be the victim again, to get what I want. I became the author of my own story. And you realize just how simple it is to transform your situation. Not easy, right? And it takes time. But there's always a way to get from point A to point B. And this separates the world into two kinds of people. People who look at how things are, who accept reality as truth, who complain, and people who look at what can be, who make the most of any situation, look at life as if it's clay, to be molded, to be shaped. It seems funny to me, knowing what I do now, that I went through any of my life like a hamster on a wheel. That I talked to people every day who didn't energize me, that I didn't want to be around, that I did things I wasn't passionate about. That is insanity. Because if you don't like something, but you do nothing to change it, what's left for you to do? Complain. Wine, stay where you are, that's it. See, one of the reasons I reference athletics so much is because they bring this mentality on you that when things become difficult, when things become challenging, your job, your one job is to find a way to figure it out. And I always did. And I took that and I brought it to everything else I do. And now it's eye-opening to see people achieving success, financial freedom, these things everyone wants and know that the difference between them and everyone else is that they felt like they deserved it. A lot of the time they weren't smarter, stronger, they weren't more gifted starting out, but they moved toward what they wanted. They didn't cry or groan about the problems, they didn't look for sympathy. Those at the top of the mountain are not victims. They would never let themselves be victims. It's about the other side, the opportunity. Getting from where you are to what you want. When I was a little bit younger, 
My grandfather would make a point to pull me aside every so often and say, Eddie, you are stronger than you think you are. And you know, at the time, it didn't really resonate with me, right? I kind of smiled, act appreciative, and, and moved on. Uh, but then that thing called life happens, you know, when you start to see the ups and downs, you experience the hardships. And no one's there to tell you how to act or how to handle it. But your response is what makes all the difference. And I look back now to that message and can't help but wonder if I'd be where I'm at today without it. Because it's not just a reminder. It's not something that goes on a sticky note and hangs on a wall. It's so much more. It's the reason that I can navigate through change, through loss. The reason I don't fear failure. See, nothing ever happened that I couldn't get through. And you don't realize that unless you look back. If you decide to rise to the occasion, you will. You're 100% capable of doing more than you ever imagined. Reality is a narrative, and you are always stronger than you think you are. Life is not some puzzle to be solved. It's never about hiding or worrying or eliminating all bad fortune. It's about knowing that you can and will get through everything. That nothing can push you down and keep you there. Maybe the worst is yet to come. Maybe it's not. But the best of you, that is undiscovered. And through the very hardship that you once feared, you'll be able to paint a portrait of the new you, brushstroke by brushstroke. And see, back then, I didn't get that. I didn't know that growing up meant enduring difficulty. I didn't know what I was truly capable of. But years have passed and now I know that I am stronger than I thought I was. And while life is not certain, my confidence stands alone. It's the reason that I run towards my dreams, never away from them, and neither should you. Don't forget that, because during even the worst of days, the darkest of nights, you are always stronger than you think you are. You had a vision, a vision to build something that they've never seen before. But they gave it one look and called it insanity. You worked hour after hour for little reward. They watched from a distance and deemed it irrational. You simplified your life until it consisted of only your goal. But amidst convoluted objectives and routines, they declared it a tragedy. You failed and you failed, but you would not give in. And entertained by this struggle, they called you stubborn. Through it all, you never lost faith. They sat back and called it delusional. And then something happened. You succeeded. You succeeded like no one else before. And when you shared your result, they called it genius. 
When you told your story, they admired the persistence. When you uncovered your knowledge, your learning, your expertise, they asked for advice. See, you provided a blueprint, yet few people follow. Now they call you gifted, lucky, and you shake your head because as you made that climb, something became very obvious to you. This word, insanity, defined as extreme foolishness or irrationality, this is what got you to where you are today. And on the surface, when you took that first step, it was insanity. You left what was known, you were questioned, doubted, you looked inexperienced, you fell on your face. And hour after hour, you prayed that it was not in vain, and some days it felt like it was. But every single day, you left something behind. The things that you'd outgrown, the things that would have surrounded your every move had you stayed in that spot, had you been intimidated by the depths of what they call insanity. But you didn't. You traded them for a chance to get what matters most. And now as you gain perspective, you see what was insane yesterday is now everyday reality. It's what you do without giving it a second thought. And you want more. Just the taste made you want more. To see what's out there, to see how far you can push. That is life. And as you prepare to continue down the road ahead of you, the peaks, the valleys, the twists, the turns, the ups and the downs, you realize that the only thing in this world that qualifies as insanity is being unwilling to take that next step. The fear of standing out, of being different, of living a life that was meant for you, that you deserve. Because to disregard that opportunity Oh, the insanity. While the world slept, I stayed awake. I guess I couldn't bear to close my eyes and drift off into a dream, knowing that as soon as they opened, it would end. I sat up, I put my goals and aspirations into the backpack next to my bed, threw it over my shoulder, and I left. Destination unknown but I was armed with the belief that opportunities exist wherever you bring them to life. So while the world slept, I stayed awake. There comes a point when dreaming takes the form of an adversary. I didn't want to wake up and see the discrepancy between fantasy and reality. I didn't want to be associated with wishing or hoping or crossed fingers. See, the beauty of life is that it always provides the necessary pieces to put your puzzle together so long as your eyes remain open. So while the world slept, I stayed awake. As the mind lays dormant, so does opportunity. As the ideal life remains imaginary, so does the action needed to build it. The best way to find answers is simply to look for them. A folded up map hidden away in your desk, it suggests a million possibilities, proposes an endless journey, but until you grab it, open your door and step outside, it will never truly take you there. I wanted to feel the wind on my face, the sand on my feet, and even the most adventurous souls in the world don't have time to see everything, to experience it all. Time is the most precious of commodities. 
So while the world slept, I stayed awake. The secret is not in opening your eyes, it's in what you allow your eyes to see. It's easy to live while being asleep, to completely disregard or walk right by the advantages, the opportunities, the pieces that we can reach out and use to shape our lives. Look, it's not about being right or wrong. It's about trading what you kind of want for what you really want. It's about walking down your street and viewing every single thing in front of you as perfection as the stars aligning as the perfect ingredients to create whatever you choose. Leave nothing for sleep. Let your dreams envy your reality. And while the rest of the world sleeps, I dare you to stay awake. I dare you to get everything you've ever wanted. I had an interesting weekend. I was pretty sick and uh, almost didn't run the half marathon that I had scheduled, but decided, hey, worst comes to worst, I have a bad race, the world will keep spinning. So I jumped in the car and headed that way. When all was said and done, I crossed the finish line, I ended up with a personal best of over 15 seconds a mile in a race that I almost walked away from because I didn't think I would be at my best. And when I regained composure, settled in a little bit, I had to wonder how many times almost has gotten in my way. How many times a simple decision to stop, to not go or wait for later has changed the outcome of my life. How many times has it changed the world? How many potential bestsellers were almost started? How many potential greats almost stuck with it? How many friendships almost remained intact. Think about how fickle our world is, how these simple decisions to start, to go, to not drop the pen or hit the snooze button can change everything. And after that race, I told myself that I will never get in my own way again. I will never sell myself short. I will do everything in my power to be on the right side of almost. The worst outcome is so much better than wondering. You know, and there are moments that we question if it's worth it, if it matters, if there really will be payout. And being pragmatic, you know, maybe there will, maybe there won't. But the moments that we remember in life, the things that end up meaning the most to us, they don't come from almost jumping. They're born from the recognition that failure will not kill us. An opportunity hides behind mountains of almost. You know, you can do what you've always done or you can go further. You can keep your stories and ideals locked away in your head or you can share them with the world. You can worry about the collapse or you can build. Change the architecture of humanity, contribute something extraordinary, not be a victim of almost but go in with the intent of leaving a mark, of holding your ground. You know, there are no certainties in life, that's for sure, but I can promise if you never leave, my friend, you will never arrive. And with so many potential destinations out there, who wants that? Who wants to pay the cost of admission and not see the show? Be the person 30 years from now talking, joking with your friends, family, and, and teammates about how you almost didn't go. You almost said no. You almost let your insecurity and doubt get the best of you. But then you took a step back and you remembered what matters.
he with the courage to fail will live forever. It's the one in the shadows who will be forgotten, who will dissolve with time. Because while a safe existence temporarily guarantees that our needs will be met, it also promises a certain mortality. See, a hundred years from now, we will be gone, like sand on a beach or snow falling from the sky. Nothing will separate us from the physical world. But the stories we leave will transcend time. These stories are the culmination of the very best this world has to offer. They are what you get when you push through the smokescreen. Find what matters when you would trip over your feet one million times, climb stone after stone just to see the view from the top of your dream. And then comes the inevitable question, why? Why risk it all? Why dream of greener pastures, of settling for nothing but the best? Because to those peering out from the shadows, your existence is trivial. It's unnecessary, it's inexplicable. But we are not rational beings. And that's okay, maybe that's the way it should be. I would go as far as to say that a safe existence is the crazy thing. That to not soak up every ray of sunlight, swim in every body of water, run through every field possible, that is crazy. To not give in to that desire is crazy. And for what? So that we don't get condescending looks from faces we don't know? I've fallen. I have fallen and I will fall over and over again. And I promise you this because to remain upright is to watch the world go by and I refuse to. This view from my window is fine, but the view from outside is unparalleled. Nothing is of more value than what we get when we chase the intangibles, follow the music, leave the expectations in search of the possibilities because the former has a defined limit and the latter has no end. It's where some go right and others go left, where the ones afraid to get mud on their knees or sweat on their hands draw a circle around themselves and call you crazy. But there's nothing crazy about why you do it. There's nothing crazy about happiness, success. There's nothing crazy about passion. These things are immortal. They remain long after we do. They are the very essence of what it means to live. That compulsion to walk away from a scripted story is not wrong. It's what's beautiful with this world. It's your reason to struggle, to fight, to persevere, because no matter how many times you fall, you will rise again. Who are you? I suppose you could answer with a short summary of what you've done in your life. You wouldn't be wrong. Perhaps you could point to the present, what you're doing right now. You'd be correct. Maybe you could even respond by referencing your goals and dreams. Your answers would be impossible to disprove. But who you are is more than that. Much more. Can't be quantified or confined to a description. Who you are goes further. You are a journey to a distant shore. 
You're where the water meets the horizon. You are comprised of the very same elements that make up the earth, the moon, and the sun. You are literally remnants of stars that have come and gone, lighting up our sky for billions and billions of years. How can that be reduced to an elevator speech? And all this matters. It matters because you are more significant than you will ever know. A small but irreplaceable part of something perfect, inconceivable to mankind. You may be the culmination of your past, your present, and your future, but you are also the gaps that exist between them. The blank spaces, the unknowns, the opportunity to see the world as it truly is, an extension of you, the freedom woven into every breath you take. Just like the sun is tasked with rising and setting, you have a responsibility to live life to the fullest, to chase what exists on the other side of the mountains. That's where you find what matters most. And you can attempt to quantify this, but just like that first ray of sunlight, reflecting on your face through the window in the morning, it's impossible to fully capture. Words, pictures, stories, they'll never hold a candle to the actual experience, to being there, that moment in time. Those moments are who you are. Hand in hand with everything your two eyes take in, they blend together to create an existence that cannot be explained or taught. It can only be lived. And that is exactly what you're here to do. Live life. Light up the sky like those stars that came before you. Shine through this universe. If that ends up being all you have, it will be more than enough because it's you. There's a rope. It's stretched taut about 10 feet up parallel to the ground. You're holding on with both hands, just hanging there. You're not alone, there are people to your left and to your right, all holding on just like you are. A few minutes pass, then a few more, and suddenly this little realization trickles into the back of your head. This is not going to be a cakewalk. In fact, it's starting to hurt. You've moved beyond that phase of simply being an unfamiliar territory, and now you know where you are. You're uncomfortable. Out of sheer curiosity, you look to your left, you look to your right, and you start noticing that these people next to you are beginning to let go. One by one, they're making the decision that it simply isn't worth it. So they make it stop, and so could you but you decide not yet, you hold on. Maybe it's curiosity, maybe in some convoluted way it's ambition, but you separate yourself from the negative, from the voice convincing the people next to you to just lift their fingers and make it go away. Somehow you're floating above all that. Another minute goes by, another and another, but it doesn't make a difference because you're focusing on the seconds. Because anyone can do anything for one second, it just so happens that they add up. It happens that they create minutes. And after a little while, you again glance to your left, you look to your right, and this time, everyone is gone. This time you're alone. The last one standing, hanging on this rope, and you think about it, there was no definitive moment when this result crystallized. It was a product of what you didn't do. It's the result of not letting go. To someone passing by, you did nothing remarkable. When others let go, you simply hung on. And it turns out that that can make all the difference.
so many different thoughts, opinions, approaches regarding success. That magical word, what is it? What does it mean? How do you get there with reality swirling around you? Problems derailing, pushing you back. We're inclined to believe that getting what we want needs to be some huge production, some monumental shift. And I do not agree with that. Success is seeing the big picture. It is hanging on through the negative, looking past the now. It's what you don't do. That fight in you that separates your goals from everything else. Look, there's always a point when you're tired, when your fingers start to slip, when a simple decision takes the pain intertwined in the present moment and makes it disappear. But right now is not what you're after. Anyone can have right now. The goal, the finish line, is down the road. It requires that you hang tight, that you strap in and ride this thing out. If you want it, it's there. It's that simple. It's not a trick or a riddle. It's a question. When others let go, will you hang on? comfort and familiarity. In a world where unknown doesn't necessarily mean good or bad, it's an interesting association. Yeah, that possibility of losing what you have is always real. You know, being mortal, being susceptible to misfortune, we want to protect what's ours. But that's where I diverge. Because what's mine isn't just in my home or garage. It's out there. It's in the universe. It's held captive by what's around every single corner. What's mine is hidden behind tomorrow and the day after that and the day after that. See, walking the same path, doing the same things, expecting the same results, yeah, it's fine but it's just so limiting. If you don't allow yourself to get lost, then you have to be okay knowing that a part of you will never be found. And that's something I can't live with. Life is so much bigger than your front door. It's more than a, a yearly review, a commute, a test, a routine. It's the places you've never been, the people you've never met, the dreams that you haven't sought out. Then why is getting lost so important? It's important because you temporarily leave everything you know behind. And for a few short minutes, your subconscious understands that life exists beyond the hamster wheel. One of the greatest truths out there is that you are not confined by anything other than your own mind. So why not free it? Why not step outside the glass cube, rewrite your story, your narrative? Allow yourself to take that left that brings you to an unknown destination. And while, you know, for a while you'll be concerned, you'll worry, you'll think about failure, at the end of the day, you will grow, you will learn, and most importantly, you will find your way home. And every time you do, that front door feels just a little bit different. The world around you takes on a slightly new shape. Your front door is no longer an object keeping you in, it's a gateway that opens up for you at your discretion. It connects you to the outside world. It gives you the tools to create the life that you want. Not the life you should have or the one you're supposed to have, but the one you can have, right? So step outside, get lost. You owe it to yourself.
So here's a story for you. There's a runner, he's got a race coming up, and he's been preparing for this thing like crazy. He knows the race course like the back of his hand, he knows the pace that he wants to maintain, when he's gonna sprint, all that stuff. And because of this, it's safe to assume that if everything goes as planned, he has really positioned himself well. But let's say in an alternate universe, he wakes up the day of the race and he has the flu. Or let's say he gets out of the car and finds out that they rerouted the course. Or maybe he's running and has a cramp in his leg that doesn't go away, completely throws off his pace and his race plan. Suddenly, what was once his strength, what was once his backbone, is now a lot less relevant. And I think at some point we've all run into this. Things happening that are beyond our control. Not because of anything that we necessarily did or did not do. But sometimes life just happens. You know, you can always control effort. You can always maximize knowledge and preparation. But what about the other stuff? How does someone handle the adversity, the lifelong influx of events that test us and challenge us? You know, you can have a game plan and you should. You should always be prepared for what's ahead, but that's half the battle. The other half, the part that's overlooked, is being able to pick up the pieces and put them back together when that plan falls through. Rerouting, modifying, changing, adapting, and continuing towards your goal. You know, because that is the exact moment when most people call it quits. You can't control life, and that's frustrating, but what you can control, what you always have a complete handle on, is how you deal with the circumstance that you're in, how you position yourself. In other words, you can always control you. And 99.999% of the time, that's enough. The so-called perfect experiences are few and far between. They are extremely rare. That run will not be perfect, but so what? That doesn't mean you can't mentally train yourself to push the discomfort down, to adjust, to move forward despite the cramp in your leg. Nothing in life should intimidate or discourage because there is always a solution. It doesn't matter what your problem is, there is a solution. Maybe it's not the one you originally wanted or drew up. Maybe it's not right in front of your face, but it's there. And even more importantly, it's obtainable. You know as well as I do that life has peaks and valleys. It has ups and downs, and the ups are phenomenal. They're why we live. But the downs should never push you back or hold you down. They are simply life happening. They are your plans not going through exactly as you anticipated. But understanding that this is just part of the process, it's just par for the course, that will give you the strength to hold on, to push through, to keep climbing that mountain piece by piece in pursuit of the top. Seek out your solution, your path, make the adjustments necessary to step around the hardships and keep going. Get what you want, because at the end of the day, that is what matters.